What's going on guys, Jack here, and today we are going to be taking you along on my design process, and this is actually the second episode of this, so if you guys missed the first episode, the first episode was over on Placeit, in this episode we're going to be designing some t-shirt designs over on Photoshop, but you can also follow along and use the exact same processes and tools that I'm going to be using on Photoshop on a free online software called Photopia. Uh, I'll link it down in the description if you want to check that out and you guys can follow along on the same process that I'm going to be taking in today's episode. Alright, so let's get right into the episode. I'm over here on Photoshop and when I'm making my designs, I usually go for 4500 by 5400 but today and recently what I've been doing is I've been doing 5000 by 7100 because I no longer post to Merch by Amazon and that was the original Merch by Amazon Dimensions, I now post on 5000 by 7100 so I can post to Redbubble on more products and have a good looking product. For example, the greetings card, if you're on 4500 by 5400, it looks very, very kind of off. And if you have it on 5000 by 7100, it's gonna look better. So I might as well just go for the 5000 by 7100 at this point because I don't use Merch by Amazon. But if you're posting these designs that you're making to not just Redbubble, or not just Redbubble, Etsy, and whatever. If you're also posting them to Merch by Amazon, I do recommend you guys go for 4,500 by 5,400. And with that being said, I'm gonna be doing mine at 5,000 by 7,100, and let's get right into the video. So if you're new to Photoshop, what you can do is go to the top left, click File, click New, and you're brought up to this section here. Same thing on Photopia, I believe. And then you can just go ahead and put in your width, your height, which is 5,000 by 7,100 for us. And the resolution pixel sprint, I just leave it at 72. Anything more than that, uh, it's not really that necessary for these t-shirts. So what I do is I go ahead and click create. And then we're in this page here. And it gives us a black background to begin with. But, I like, but what I like to do is I create two layers. And what I do is I delete the background. And I just click the delete clear when I was on that if you guys are new to Photoshop. And what I do is I go ahead and I make one white and one black so I can test out two different backgrounds depending on the type of design I'm making. I just grab the paint bucket, make it white, grab the paint bucket, make the color black, and then also do that for the second layer. And then what I do is I usually hide them both or just put the one of them on at a time. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make an Easter design today because Valentine's Day is coming next. But Easter is really what you probably want to be designing for at this point because if you get the earlier you get on the Easter 2020 kind of thing, the earlier you get your designs out, the more they're going to get seen and have chances to build organic traffic. So uh, I'm going to be using a lot of text from Defont.com. So actually what I'm going to do is that we're going to go over to Defont.com and grab a font to use. And we're going to use some fonts that I already have from Defont.com. But I'm going to go and show you guys how you can grab free fonts from Defont.com for your designs really quick. All right, so over on Defont.com, what you're going to do is you're going to come here. And what I like to do is go to Top. And then on the More Options tab when you're on Defont.com, you can look here and click on 100% free. And these are the fonts after you press Submit that you're going to be able to use on your print demand websites or your print demand t-shirts. And as you can see, there's a lot of good fonts here. You might recognize some. One that I really like is Beba New. I use that for a lot of my YouTube thumbnails and it's an absolutely free font to use. The bull font's another good one. But something I also like to do is I go over here and I go to themes. Then I go and I click on handwritten under script. And I go ahead and do the same thing, make sure it's in public domain. And what we're gonna do is actually download some fonts here. I actually recorded me downloading some other fonts and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get the same ones, but I really did like this honey script, so I downloaded that one, and I believe I downloaded another one up here, which was Luna, and those are the two I think we're gonna be using in the video. Also with another one that we're gonna be using is Subscriber, I don't see right here, oh, there it is. So Subscriber's another one I really like, and those are the three that I'm gonna be using in this video, so if you wanna download those and make a very similar design that what I'm making, you go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm just re realizing now that you guys couldn't see me messing around with the layers in the bottom right here because my camera was covering it. But what I do is I click this little eye button to hide layers and show layers. And because I'm using white text right now, what I like to do is use a black background. And you're gonna see I have the fonts here, but they're very small. But a, a quick trick for you guys if you're in Photoshop, I'm not sure if this works on the free version online, but you can go ahead and press Control and then T. And then you're gonna be able to transform your layer and make it bigger or smaller. 
and it's going to take a little bit of computer power but it will make it bigger and you can do that for both of them after you click on the layer you can press ctrl t and then make it bigger then you'll actually be able to see what's in the box and i usually do this every time i make designs rather than change the font size this is a way faster way to really get the desired size and fit it inside the template we have to its max capabilities rather than just messing around the font size every time i like to just use ctrl t or you can click on it go to the top and click edit and then go click transform and then go to free transform actually not above not transform free transform and then you can just drag it here like that too all right now you're probably wondering what kind of easter design we're going to make with these fonts and today we're just going to make a basic design for our first design i'm going to be making two designs in this video but the first one is going to be very basic we're just going to make a happy easter design what i like to do is always use two different fonts because anything more than that's a bit cluttered or just stick to one font but happy easter really is a nice kind of way to use these handwritten fonts because Easter is a very like cartoony, you know, kind of event. So I think these fonts will fit well. And I'm not sure about this bottom font. I think I'm actually going to change it. So if we go ahead and look at my fonts, I can take a look at what looks better. And I really like this subscriber font with the with this other font we have here, which is Luna. I'm going to leave happy in all lowercase and then I'm going to make it as big as possible or a little bit bigger. And then once I make it bigger, I'm going to bring the Easter, make that one bigger with the control T. And then the one last thing I want to do for this design, because it's not going to be that crazy, is I want to get some kind of image, maybe some bunny ears or an, some eggs to put around. So there is a place where you can get free vector images to put on your designs like this. And we're going to go over there right now. All right. And the website that I'm talking about is called Free SVG. And this website is basically a collection of images and that are all under the public domain. So you can go over here and I just searched in Easter bunny and I found some bunnies here. I'm going to use uh, this bunny for the design. I'm just going to grab it and click download. And then once you download it, I can literally just drag it into my Photoshop. And you're going to see now I have this little bunny on my design. You can press control T once again, make it a bit bigger. What I'm going to do is just adjust it. So it's on top of the happy and I'm going to make a few of them uh, around my image. And, but before I do that, and I copy paste it a bunch of times, what I'm actually going to do is change the color of it. And to do that, you can always grab the paint bucket and just overlay it. But sometimes that doesn't work. And if that doesn't work, the next best thing, which you can do, because that's not always an option, it's not always this nice, is you go over to your image. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Right click it and go to blending options. Then over here, click on color overlay and just check that box. Then you can change it to whatever color you want, one color, and then you click OK, and bam, the same effect is applied to it as if you painted over it. And now we have a very nice looking bunny on our happy Easter design, and we can copy this bunny, and we're going to make him a bit smaller, have some bunny friends here, just hopping behind him. And there's our happy Easter design. I think it would look kind of good if we had a bunny up here too. Just a couple bunnies. And we're going to have this bunny going the other way. So to do that, you want to press edit in the top left, go to transform, and then click flip horizontally. I think my head's not covering it. My head is covering it, but you can see the blue on the right hand side. Flip horizontally, and then you can go ahead and make him bigger, however you want. And we're going to have to bring these down a little bit. But you get the point. And it's really easy to make text-based designs in Photoshop, especially with these little images like this. And then we have our happy Easter design. Have a little bunny up here. Happy Easter. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I might actually add some eggs here. I think that would be really good. So I'm going to go ahead and actually grab a quick egg, some quick eggs real quick. All right, so what I did was I went to free SVG and got some eggs. Then I just pasted three of them and made them a different size and they're still yellow. So what I want to demonstrate is that when you use a paint bucket on these eggs, it doesn't really work because they're not a solid color. And you also want to make sure that you're not using too many gradients or things that really can't be printed onto t-shirts too well. You want to stay to more like strokes or like solid colors, solid lines, and you're going to be a lot better off with the printing quality because you guys have to remember that these things are going on t-shirts. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. Go to blending options and just click on color overlay. And then you can go ahead and do that for all three. And then we're going to have a very nice design. 
and it doesn't take that long to make a nice design and you can get free graphics you don't have to pay for them obviously i do love PlaySit because what you can do is actually take the graphics from PlaySit, download them and use them in your photoshop designs too so because you have the rights to those graphics so that's a really handy thing to do as well because they do have a lot more uh, a lot bigger library than just a free svg place you can also take place it graphics and put them over here but something you could also do is put in hoppy easter instead of happy you could we could definitely add the color scheme we could make these like more easter colors but i like the way it looks right now and that's going to be our first easter design and now let's go into the second one and before we go to the next design i know i'm kind of all over the place but what you want to do when you're having a photoshop design if you guys don't already know this is this layer for the background here instead of actually going ahead and deleting it what you can do is it click the eyeball and hide it then you aren't gonna really be able to see your design but when you save it now it's gonna be a transparent background and I am a bit zoomed in the actual whole thing looks like this so here's the top of the t-shirt I like to position my designs at the top near the chest so I have to they don't have to position them as much when I put them on designs on different platforms but yeah that's all you have to do to save your design and then you can go ahead and save it as a PNG so the transparency will save and then you're good to go all right for our next design I just got a really good idea on this graphic that I seen on SVG org a second ago when we we're getting the other bunny and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a similar design to a mama bear design I don't know if you've ever seen them Basically, it's a bear and people tend to put the word mama bear inside the bear because it looks good and it makes sense. Mama bear, there's a bear. So I'm going to do that, but it's going to be mama bunny or papa bunny, stuff like that. And we're going to see how that looks with these texts and let's get right into it. All right, so this is the bunny I'm going to be downloading, bring it over to Photoshop. And I'm going to make this design in white background with white font or black font. So what I'm going to do is click on these two fonts and then I'm just going to click on them with this uh, this generic tool at the top. Find the fonts, change the color on the color picker, click OK, then click check mark and then bam, there's our happy. Actually, I just remembered we're going to be putting the words inside the black bunny so it's going to be hard to see black text inside of the black image and we're going to go ahead and change it back to white because we actually need it to be white. Then we're going to put the bunny layer behind these texts we're going to click on the text click Control t like we've been doing for a while and put it inside the bunny but first remember we got to make the bunny bigger because well we don't want a tiny t-shirt and then you're going to go ahead make the bunny kind of the whole width or a good amount of the width we want to be able to read the text from the thumbnail so we're going to bring this make it right there right in the middle check it off and then we're going to start putting the words in and fitting them in the bunny so what I'm going to do is not write Happy Easter, I'm going to write, well actually no, we could write Happy Easter just as easily. I'm going to show you guys why Photoshop is really good because you can customize things really easily. You can write Happy Easter in it, but we can also write multiple different things in the same design and it takes like two seconds to change it. So right here, we already have a design. We could save this. I'd say this is a pretty good looking design. We could even add a few eggs here or a few little other graphics like eggs or anything easter related like a basket something like that or some hearts anything that really just fill in a little bit of extra space but what we can also do is go here and instead of like mama bear we'll have mama bunny so mama and then we'll change this to bunny and then bam we already have a new design and obviously we'd reposition this to make it look a bit better so mama bunny bam another design down the train and go ahead and make it pop a bunny and then bam another design and it's that simple and I actually think this one doesn't look as good but you can readjust it until it does look good and it's not that hard to make it look pretty pretty professional really these designs look really good and they take two seconds free images you can even use free online Photoshop so I just want to show you guys that you don't need to pay money to make good quality designs and there are plenty of designs out there that don't even have a bunny in them they just have nice text and all these texts you can get from Defont. there's some pretty good options and a lot of these handwritten ones are very favorable to people on a marketplace like Etsy and Redbubble because they're very artsy and they look very nice one more thing I want to show you guys is that say you have this design and because you can post it to Redbubble for absolutely free if you guys want to just go the extra step and you think you don't have to but something if you want to make up some more design slots obviously it might not sell but what you can do 
very quickly for a very low effort is go ahead and change the text to black and then both of them and after you change both the text to black you can make the bunny white oh wrong color and then you're gonna have a pretty much whole new design and you, all you have to do is change a couple colors so it's that simple once again blending options we're gonna cover overlay it and then bam whole new design or a whole another design that say you could also adjust for sticker on Redbubble so if you have this design this design might not look good on a sticker but it would look good on a shirt and then for the sticker portion of that design in Redbubble you could go ahead and make it a black bunny so the outline doesn't just blend in with the sticker if you know what I mean because Redbubble is a little bit annoying for that but yeah that's another way you could do that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video I really just wanted to show you guys my design process and what I use Photoshop to do to make simple designs and a lot of these designs that are simple actually sell and they look really good especially with the free fonts from defont.com I love using those fonts and I'm in no way associated with them but they are a really good website and pretty much everyone who posts there are just posting their own work and people make the fonts for the website and they post them to there so it's awesome those people are sharing them allowing other people to use them and I really enjoy making Photoshop designs because you have a lot more creative freedom where place it you have a lot of very good graphic images and it makes it easy to make designs for someone who doesn't know how to design at all but I am someone who does have some design experience in a way so I really do like messing around in Photoshop because it allows me to try new things and you know experiment with different design concepts but place it I still do highly recommend and if you missed the episode on how I design with place it definitely go check it out link will be down in the description but with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash the like button. It's been your friend Jack. Keep striving, and I'll see you guys in the next video.